Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I would like to talk about the Google Finance function in Sheets. Now, this function is very important. You can analyze stocks with it and do a bevy of different things, but let me just show you what it does. For the sake of this video, we will look at Amazon, Apple, and Tesla to analyze those three stocks. Now, what Google Finance does is you input the ticker and the attribute you want to analyze. So I have some up here, the name of the company, the price, the price to earnings ratio, the 52 week high and the 52 week low. I'll show you later, but these have to be typed out in this way for them to work. Now what you do, we'll do name of Amazon first. And by name, I mean the full name of the company, not just the ticker. So we'll type equals our Google Finance function. We'll provide the ticker. You could type it out in quotations or we have it right here. So we'll just click on it, comma, and now the attribute. So the attribute we want to find here is the name. We can either do quotations and type it out or we could click on it. Since we'll drag down to the other two, I'm just going to do quotations and type name. You hit enter and it gives you the name, Amazon.com Incorporated, the full name. You notice it takes a second to load because it gives you pretty up-to-date statistics for a lot of them. Um, you'll see in the bottom here, some can be delayed up to 20 minutes, like price maybe, um, and some of the other ones, but name, I mean, is a pretty quick one to find. Now we want to find the rest, price, price to earnings, high 52, low 52. So we'll start typing equals Google Finance. And then the ticker is going to be Amazon. And now for our attribute, we can just click on it. Price, just click on the cell that says price, hit enter. And it'll give you the price of Amazon. Now you're going to want to drag it across to do the other ones. But when you do that, it's going to mess with the function a little. So you need your cell A3 to stay in place. So how you do that is you put a dollar sign in front of A and a dollar sign in front of 3 so that when you drag your function, A3 stays because that ticker shouldn't change. The only thing that should change is the attribute, price to price earnings to high 52 to low 52. Now we can drag it across, and you'll notice that the dollar sign A, dollar sign 3 is the same for all of it, referring back to this cell. Now you can do the same thing for the other two. Apple attribute price. And then we'll do the dollar signs again. Drag it. Then you can compare them amongst each other. Um, there are a lot more attributes that I'll show you, but these are some of the popular ones. Ticker for Tesla, attribute, we'll do price again. Put in our dollar signs to make the ticker cell stationary. Then we'll drag across. So that's a basic understanding of how you do it, but we can go a little more in depth than that. You'll notice that the function I have listed above has more than just ticker and attribute, which I've gone over so far. It also has start date, end date, or number of days, and interval. So we'll look at that here in terms of Tesla. So just follow along and I'll explain. We'll type in equals Google Finance again. Our ticker for this one, we'll do Tesla. The attribute, we'll do price. And then we can look at the price on a certain time interval. So we'll do the past year. Today's the 27th. So we'll do in quotations. You have to do quotations. 2 slash 27 slash 2021. So that's the start date. The end date, we want it to be today. So instead of typing out today's date, well, actually, let me go back to the other one because we want it to be 
2020, a year ago. Instead of typing out today's date for the end date, we want to do today. So how you do that is you type out today with opening parentheses and then closing it just like that. That's just how Sheets reads today. Um, not really sure why that's how it's formatted, but it's just how it is. And then the interval will be weekly. So we want the weekly price of Tesla for every week since a year ago today. Now it's kind of a lot, but it's really simple if you just think about it. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna populate all the cells beneath it, giving us the date and the price for every week in the past year. So we'll hit enter and it might take a second to load, you'll notice, but watch what happens. So we're given the date and even the time, four o'clock, when the market closes, and the close price for every week in the past year. Now, I'll make a little chart real quick just to show you the things you can do with this. And there you have it. I mean, it's quick and simple. and effective in analyzing stocks. Now, there are a lot more attributes you can use than just price or high 52, low 52. You can find the volume, market cap, uh, earnings per share, close yesterday, number of outstanding shares, so many different things. You could find out more about this online, but these are all of them listed from their website, uh, support.google.com. And then there's also different attributes you can use for mutual funds. The one week return, four week return, 1352, 260 week return, uh, dividends, capital gain, even Morningstar rating, so many different things. Um, but these are real time attributes like these ones and the mutual funds. Another cool option you can find are historical attributes. We'll look at these real quick. So we'll open up equals Google Finance and then ticker um, we'll do Tesla again type it in quotations the attribute we can do let's do open so the opening price for a certain date and we'll do an interval we'll do let's say the last month so in quotations 127 2021 and then comma to today no quotations for today remember your parentheses and then we'll hit enter and look at that so we did open I believe yep so this is the opening price of Tesla every day for the past month and now you can do close, high, low, volume. And this one's super cool, all. So all of the above. And it'll be a whole data table for you. So we'll change it to all. And it populates all those cells. So today we went over some of the ins and outs of the Google Finance function. We could get a little more in depth with it, but all you really need is the basic understanding. Then you can apply different attributes to change your function. I like the function a lot and I think it's useful. You can create all kinds of charts with it too and really just help you kind of understand where stocks are at. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, please give it a like and comment and subscribe. Also comment asking if there are other functions you'd like to see more of. Thank you.